this is one of those projects that I'm not exactly sure why I would put myself through something like this. It actually wasn't that hard to make, but now it's just frustrating that I can't beat it. Because when I say that it's an impossible task, I actually mean that it's relatively impossible. If you've played Among Us, you're probably familiar with the reactor, Simon Says-esque keypad task where the the buttons will flash or the, the blue square will flash on the console screen and then you'll have to hit the buttons in the correct order. I've essentially taken that task and I've made it impossible by creating 49 buttons, 49 flashes, and not only are there more possibilities within the sequence, you also have a much longer sequence. Instead of getting five correct in a row, you have to get 18. So it's safe to say that this is an extremely difficult challenge. If you feel like you're up to it, there's a link in the description to an itch.io project where you can try this out yourself. And there's also a link to the source code for the project if you're interested in how this was made. There's honestly nothing really exciting about the development of a tool like this. It was mostly just playing around in Asprite, my pixel editor software that I use, and getting the right number, I think. I just kind of arbitrarily chose a seven by seven grid because I thought it looked extremely difficult. I made the buttons pretty quickly and converted that same grid size into the uh, the console grid. So it was fun kind of replicating the graphics from the game, which is exactly what I did. I pulled up an image of the task from Among Us and just tried to get that feel. I think the most fun part to work on was probably the buttons. Just, it was nice. I, I, it was just fun to try to get the different indicators, like green if you got it successfully correct, uh, gray if it's inactive, and then uh, red in case you got something incorrect, and then they would just kind of flash red. So that was really fun. I did decide to enhance the task a little bit with a grid that is overlaid over the console because in the original game it's a 3x3 three three grid so it's very easy when something flashes for you to tell what position it's in because it's either left, left center, or to the right. Uh, but with this there's obviously five positions within the center that it could be in. It gets a little confusing so it's an option. The code, the I guess the breakdown of how the game works is that you're generating a sequence of numbers between 0 and 49 and these are basically it's an index of what is flashing the position of the flash the idea is that the player is going to press buttons and each time they're required to give a sequence the sequence that they're giving builds up to whatever is unsolved like the next unsolved number in the the actual sequence. I realize this is kind of confusing. So just imagine that there's 18, there actually is 18 numbers in the sequence. So the player would have to essentially do 18 iterations. Each iteration, the number of buttons they have to hit increases by one. So they start by only hitting one button, then they have to hit two, then they have to hit three. So figuring out the logic of how all that worked was pretty fun. It's just a lot of timers and uh, deciding, you just have to track how much the player has already solved if you already know that, then it's very easy to know what the console has to display because you just display up to what they have solved plus one. You display the next sequence. And if they get through all of the sequences and the number solved is equal to the number in the sequence, then the task is over and the player has succeeded. So it's really no more complicated than that. It just took me a while to work through. But it finally worked. Uh, the code really wasn't terrible. I went through this optimization process where I just pulled out a bunch of stuff just to make sure that it wouldn't get kind of bogged down in the web version because that's really the only way I plan to distribute it. So most of that was just making sure that I preloaded all of the sprites that I was constantly loading throughout the game. But other than that, works really well. I'm very satisfied with it. The only thing that I left out from the actual game is the buttons themselves don't flash red if you get something wrong. Uh, and I'm not too concerned about putting that in, but this was fun. It was really fun to work on, just a nice little couple hour thing, just for fun. And I hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked it or learned something new or just enjoyed hearing me ramble about the random stuff that I do in Godot, then make sure you hit the like and subscribe button and hopefully I'll see you in the next video.